In this video, we're going to explore the product formula for independent events. We'll do examples one, two, and three. So we need to understand what independent events means. We'll explore this more in detail later. Um, for now, we'll look at events that are definitely independent. Um, so two events are independent when knowing that one event occurs has no effect on the probability of the occurrence of the other. So obviously tossing a coin, rolling a dice, these events are independent because no matter what you get on the coin, that has no effect on what number you roll on the dice. Or tossing a coin three times, um, each coin toss has no effect on what the next one will be. Or toss a coin, draw a card. Whatever you get on the coin has no effect on, on, on what the card will be. So we're starting off the examples that are definitely independent. So uh, dependent events are, are, are more tricky. Um, so for example, um, what, what is the probability of a, a team winning a game and what's the probability that it will rain? Okay. So those probabilities, uh, are, are, are harder to use the product formula for because a particular team might be more likely to win in the rain or more likely to lose in the rain in a particular game or, um, or other things like, like you're more likely to get a heart attack if you're older. You're more likely to get a heart attack if you're a smoker, things like that. So being a smoker, being a not smoker or a non smoker and having a heart attack are dependent, right? They're not independent. Um, things like that, um, texting while driving and having a car crash. Those are dependent events. You're, you know, far more likely to have a car crash if you text when you drive, things like that. So let's just look at events that are definitely independent so we can play with the formula. The product formula is that the probability of both events occurring is a probability of the first event occurring times the probability of the second event occurring. That's the product formula for independent events. Okay. So, for example, these events, you toss a coin, you roll a dice. Are these events independent? The answer is they absolutely certainly are independent. Okay. Um, so, well, yes. Can we use the product formula? Absolutely, we can. <laughs> okay. So what is the probability of getting ahead than a four? So we haven't actually um, used this uh, formula yet. And, and, and what we have done is we have listed a, what we've done so far in this course is listed a sample space and just gone from that. So for part B, I'm just going to first list a sample space um, for this um, set of events. Okay, so we're tossing a coin, we're rolling a dice. The coin could be head and the dice could be any number or the coin could be tail and the dice could be any number. So we could get head one, head and then a two, head and then a three, head and then a four, head and then a five, head and then a six. Okay, so this is what we've looked at so far. Or we could get tail then a one, tail then a two, tail then a three, tail then a four, tail then a five, tail then a six. Okay, so this is our sample space. How many outcomes do we have for this chain of events, this sequence of events, of two events? So we have one, we have 12 outcomes here, 12 outcomes. Each of these outcomes is equally likely to occur. Head then a two, tail then a six. They all have an equal chance of occurring. What's the probability of any one of these events occurring? So the probability is one out of 12, isn't it? Because there's 12 events, one out of 12. Okay. So, so for part B, we did the sample space and now we're going to do, you know, what is the probability of getting a head then a four? Well, we've already figured out in, in, in previous lessons that that okay this is one possible event out of a, a total possible 12 events so the probability of getting ahead then a four is one out of 12 but let's use the product formula so we can expand our toolkit here so the product formula says that if these events are independent and they are we can multiply the probability of each to get the answer right so what's the so first of all we're going to get the probability of um, 
So it's probability of A and B equals probability of A times probability of B. So I'm just going to, for fun, go probability of uh, head then a 4. H and 4 equals probability of a head times the probability of a 4. See that? Okay. Now, what's the probability of getting a head? So toss a coin, get a head, the probability is whoops, 1 out of 2, isn't it? So we have a half times what? What's the probability of getting a 4 when you roll a dice? Probability of getting a 4 is 1 out of 6. Okay. What's a half times a 6? Times 1 sixth. 1 half times 1 sixth. It is 1 twelfth, right? 1 twelfth. Cool. So the product formula worked. And the, so our previous way of getting it was we, we, we list, we, we write out the sample space and we count and we get 1 out of 12. And the new way is we multiply probabilities to get 1 over 12. This is particularly useful when we have a whole bunch of things like, you know, toss a coin 20 times or, um, you know, smoke a million cigarettes or or um, drive a car a million miles. Now what's the probability of getting in a wreck, right? So when we have a lot of events in sequence, it's great to use the product formula. It really simplifies things. So and it, it's just it's just a more powerful tool for us. So let's move on to part C. What is the probability of getting a tail than a two? So for part C, I'd like you to write it out at least. Um, probability of getting a tail than a 2. Let's do this. Probability of T and 2 equals, because these events are independent, we can use the product formula. See that? It's probability of getting a tail times the probability of getting a 2. Okay? So, please give me those probabilities. What's the probability of tail? What's the probability of two? Have you got them? If you toss a coin, the probability of getting a tail is one half. And what's the probability of rolling a dice and getting a two? I still can't get a two. Um, it is one over six again, isn't it? And so, surprise, surprise. The probability of getting a tail and then a two is a half times a sixth, multiply the tops, one, multiply the bottoms, twelve. One over twelve. Agreed? It's one over twelve, right? Um, <clears throat> and in fact, we could have seen that from the sample space, right? Tail and then a two, that's right here. Tail then two, and that is one option out of twelve, right? One option out of twelve possible options or events, right? Okay, so part D, probability of getting a, a tail and then a number less than five. So probability of tail and uh, <laughs> number less than five. Hmm, how am I going to write that? I'm just going to go less than five, something like that, just for fun. Um, so that's the probability of your tail times your probability of getting a number less than five. Now, the, both events are are, are um, independent because the tossing the coin has no effect on what the dice is going to be what number will be on the dice. So um, so the, the trick here, of course, is figure out, well, what's the probability of getting a number less than five? We know the probability of a tail is one half, right? So we got a half times what? Now, probability getting a number less than five means what could the dice be? If the number is going to be less than five, the dice could be what? Could be four, right? Could be three. What else could it be? 
could be one or two. Okay, so the dice could be one, two, three, or four. Four options, but not five or six. Agreed? Because it's less than five. So not five, not six. So isn't that mean that you've got four possibilities out of six for the dice? Doesn't that make sense? Four possibilities out of six for the dice? Right? And so we just multiply those probabilities and we get our answer, right? So we can cross cancel. Two into two goes once, two into four goes twice. And we have two over six. And of course you can cross cancel again. Two into two goes once, two into six goes three times, and the answer is one third. Agreed? Right, so this is more likely. Because why is it so the other ones we got one twelve. Why why is this one more likely? Right, because there's more options for the dice. The dice can be more than just one number, right? Now if we go to our sample space, we should be able to see this as well, right? So for our sample space, um, we have uh, these options. So we need to get a tail. So that's, but we need a tail and then a, a one, two, three, or four, right? So we needed a tail and then a one, two, three, or four. So we could have got tail one, tail two, tail three, tail four. And that gave us one, two, three, four options. That gave us four options out of 12. And what does that reduce to be? Four over 12 is one third. So again, we can get this by looking at the sample space. But again, the product formula is going to be useful when you've got three, four, five, or six events in a row. Then it really um, becomes a very useful tool indeed. Because you can't list the sample space when you've got a whole bunch of uh, it's too much writing to list the sample space for for a, for a long series of events, right? Um, okay, so part E. What is the probability of getting a tail, then a number that is at least two? So I want you to do this one by yourself. Press pause on the video and do part E. What is the probability of getting a tail, then a number that is at least two? Okay, I'm going to do it now. Now, like, you can just write down the probabilities, right? You don't have to do the, the P of this and the P of that. I mean, I just do it just because I'm the math teacher and I like to use show that I'm using the formula and, and, and all that type of thing. But, I mean, if you really don't want to use this, as long as you get the answer, I guess, you understand what you're doing. But I'm just going to do it for fun. Probability of tail and a number that is at least two. So that would be um, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6, right? Greater than or equal to 2, right? And so I'm going to write that just for fun. Using the product formula again, P, uh, probability of tail times probability of at least 2. You don't have to write this out. That's no big deal. But if you, at least you're multiplying the probabilities and you show that in your work. That's the important thing. And again, the probability of getting our tail is a half. We know that. We're fine with that part. Now, probability of at least 2. What does it mean to get at least two? Well, five there, that'll work. Uh, six, that'll work. Five again, that'll work. Two will also work, because two is at least two. Okay, so the numbers that'll work for at least two are two, three, four, five, and six. Agreed? But not one. That's the trick. It's not one. Not one. We can't have one in this. Okay, so it has to be at least two. So in other words, everything but not one. Okay? So we have five options out of six for our dice, for our die, right? Five options out of six. Now we multiply those probabilities, we get one times five is five, and two times six is twelve. Five twelfths is the answer to part E. Hopefully you got that. If we check that on the sample space, we needed a tail to begin with, so one of these, right? We needed a tail. And then we needed um, not one, so a tail and two, or a tail and three, or a tail and four, or a tail and five, and a tail and six. So these guys would work, right? These guys would work. So this is five options. Um, well, I might as well just circle them. So in this, this is five options out of 12. See that? Five out of 12. And that's what we got when we used the product formula. So again, sample space, listing the sample space works. Product formula works also. All right? So part D, or sorry, uh, sorry F. 
I don't know my alphabet. Do part F on your own. Press pause on the video and do F all by yourself. It is. What is the probability of getting ahead? Then an odd number. Press pause and do part F. What is the probability of getting ahead? Then getting an odd number. Okay, I hope you press pause and tried it. I'm going to do it now. So again, you don't have to do this part. I just like to do it because I want to show that I'm using that formula. I'm your math teacher. I like to write things out and, and, and do it all the right way and everything. But prob the point is that, 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 I mean, the purpose really is like after this class, you, you'll be a little bit more confident by actually using these things in real life. And you don't have to remember all the, the all the, the little details. But in any case, what is the probability of getting ahead? Probability of ahead and odd number, right? Odd number. That's the probability of getting a head times the probability of getting an odd. Okay? That's what that is. Probability of getting a head times the probability of getting an odd number. And we know probability of getting a head is a half. Now what's the probability of getting an odd number? Okay, so that's even, that doesn't work. 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 There's an odd number three, right? So the odd numbers, as we know, are on a die, on a die are one, three, and five, not two, four, and six, right? So we can get one, three, or five. So that is three options out of six, okay? So we have a half times three over six, right? And can we cross cancel? Sure we can. Three to three goes once, three to six goes twice. And we get one times one is one, two times two is four, one quarter. And you might have said, well, there's half of the numbers are odds. So I'm just going to say probability of odd is a half. And you might have written down a half. That's fine, right? As long as you get, so, and then if we, we consult our sample space, let's see how, ma how many of these would work out for us. So we needed, um, a head. So these guys, and we needed an odd number. So H1, H3 or H5. And that was three options out of a total of 12 options. And when we simplify three over 12, we get one quarter. All right. So old method using sample space, that works. New method using product formula, that also works. Okay. So on to example three, we're going to toss a coin three times. Okay. Or, or example two, I meant. Uh, are these events independent? Okay, so here's our coin. We're going to toss it once. Oh, there's a head. Twice. Oh, there's another head. Uh, three times, there's a tail. Okay. So are those three events independent? So this one is, you toss it one time. There's a head. Toss it again. There's a tail. Uh, toss it again, there's another head, right? Are they independent? The answer is yes, they are indeed. Yep. Can we use the product formula? Yes, because the events are independent. Yes, we can, right? So uh, that's part A. Part B I should I should do here. What is the probability of getting three heads in a row? Okay, getting three heads in a row. Um, so I'm going to, let's do the product formula first. We need the product, the probability of getting head and a head and a head, okay? And using the uh, product formula, and of course it can be used for not just two events in a row, but three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten events in a row, as many as you like. That's the probability of getting a head times the probability of getting a head times the probability of getting ahead, okay? Now, multiply those probabilities and what do you get? Probability ahead is one half, right? Times probability ahead is a half, times probability of head is a half, right? And so we get half times a half times a half. Multiply the tops, one multiply the bottoms, eight. One over eight. So to get three heads in a row, the probability is one over eight, okay? And yes, you guessed it, I'm going to do the sample space because I want to show why this is one over eight. If we listed the sample space for three coin tosses, 
On the first throw, we could get a head. But on the next throw, we could get a head or a tail. So we could go head, 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 tail, right? Um, or, or we could get a tail on the first throw and a head on the next throw. Or we could get a tail on the first throw and a tail on the next throw, right? So that's just for the first two tosses. But the thing is, for the next toss, for the next toss, we could get um, a head each time, or we could, here's our first two tosses again, head, 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 tail, tail, head, tail, tail. That's our first two tosses. The last toss could be a tail each time. See that? So there's a number of ways of coming up with this sample space, and we've gone over this in previous lessons. But if 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 you if you want to do it, think of it a different way, you can. But you'll find that tossing the coin three times that you have eight eight ways of of getting the answer right. And it's also the same as I think we looked at this in previous lessons is is it's it's just like tossing three different coins right. So if you toss three different coins, that could be a head, that could be head, that could be head, or that could be head, head, tail, right? Or you could have um, head, tail, head, head, tail, tail, or you could have tail, head, head, and so on, right? And so tossing a coin, the same coin three times, same thing as tossing three separate coins. This is our sample space. We've gone over it before. And out of this, we, we ask, what's the probability of getting three heads in a row. Three heads in a row. There it is. There's our three heads in a row. And that's one out of eight. And see how our product formula matches up with our sample space method that we looked at before. Okay. So now do part C by yourself. Press pause on the video. Part C by yourself. The probability of getting no heads. Okay, I hope you've pressed pause and tried it. Hope you pressed pause and tried it. I'm going to do it now. So probability of no heads. There's a number of ways of doing it. But I'm going to use the product formula. I'm going to say that that is probability of... Um, well, what does no head mean? No heads means all what? It means all of something. All. Probability no heads is all tails, right? Okay, and that's the probability of getting a tail on the first throw times probability of getting a tail on the next throw times probability of getting a tail on the third throw, right? And this type of thing, you know, it's just coins, but it it does match up in real life because it it it's similar to you know what's the probability of of um, not getting um, a particular disease? Like it's it's probably of not getting it um, each year, for example, or the probability of not being in a car crash. It's the probability of not being in a car crash. Um, after driving 10,000 miles, after driving 20,000 miles, after driving 30,000 miles. So it's almost a, you can look at a lot of probabilities in life as a sequence of, of events. Or if you're a criminal and you like to, uh, burgle houses, you probably get away with it the first time, maybe the second time, maybe the third time. But that's a sequence of events and it, and, and it, it, it's hard to, um, hard to pull it off over and over. But anyway, um, this is just a simplified uh, version of that. So three tails in a row, again, one half times a half times a half, which is one over eight, right? Now, if we consult our sample space, here we see it. Um, probability of getting no heads is just tail, 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 and that is one over eight, right?